Uh, it is good to be here with all of you once again. About this time every summer, my family and I would visit my grandparents in a little town called Sparta, Tennessee. I grew to love the South with its red clay dirt, its viney kudzu. Do you all have kudzu here? Yes, yes, so. Oh. Well, I love that. I love that kudzu, and I love this luscious pecan pies. But most importantly, what I loved about my time in the South was their way of talking. <laughs> on those hot summer nights, I would sit out with the um, adults on the front porch, and we'd be fanning ourselves. This was before the uh, age of air conditioning. And we would, I would listen to usually the women talk about their neighbors. Now that, that Mayella Lou, she is the sweetest thing, but she cannot bake a biscuit to save her life. Bless her heart. Or Robert Jones, he is a really, really fine mind, but he cannot grow a hill of beans. Bless his heart. Did you all know that bless his heart is not actually a compliment? I had no idea. I had no idea until I was an adult that it was a way of coming at the truth sideways. That actually Mayella Lou was a lousy cook and that Robert Jones was not a great farmer. And I have heard this expression, um, it's true, used in a catty or gossipy way. But I've also heard it used as a loving acknowledgement of the frailties and the foibles of one's neighbor. And I also have to add that despite the truth-telling that was sugar-coated with bless her heart, the good people of Sparta, Tennessee were also there for each other in times of death or crop failure or loss. And so the critiques of their neighbors were also balanced by a reliable presence and a sincerity of action demonstrated by a commitment to the community to which we all belonged. Now, when most of us think about this topic of telling the truth, we don't think about a front porch in Sparta, Tennessee on a summer's night. We think of the courtroom witness stand. You know, the, like the television shows, do you swear to tell the whole truth? Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Or maybe you've seen that uh, movie. I think it's A Few Good Men, where Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson. Tom Cruise puts Jack Nicholson on the stand, and he says, I want the truth. And Jack Nicholson yells back at him, you can't handle the truth. That's right. Well, when people think about the truth. It's usually just wanting to know the facts, like what really happened, what was really said, what did a person know, and when did a person know it. So that courtroom witness stand was essentially the setting for the scripture passage that we read today, when Pilate, interrogating Jesus, asked him whether he's a king, and the defendant, Jesus, only confesses to being a witness to the truth who can only be heard by those who are of the truth. And Pilate, of course, has no clue at all what he's talking about, and he says, what is the truth? So he asks that question, but he misses the spiritual question, everything that was behind what Jesus said. And the bigger question, the harder question for us is, what does it mean to be of the truth? So this morning, I want to just talk about a couple of things. I want to answer Pilate's question. I want to talk about what are the consequences of telling the truth. And third, I want to look at when is it not appropriate to speak the truth. In order to do that, I have to go back. You know, that scene behind, uh, between Pilate and Jesus has haunted me from the very first day I heard it in Sunday school many, many years ago, before ever discovering Unitarian Universalism. As a child, I attended a Missouri Synod Lutheran church. Anybody familiar with that? Yeah. And um, I was told to believe and obey, to accept certain biblical stories as fact. But even as a child, way back then, there was something that did not add up. It, something smacked of falsehood. 
I mean, really, could a man be swallowed by a whale and survive? And I wasn't sure what a version was, but I knew I probably wasn't born of one. And, and I had serious doubts, even about the fact that somebody could die and come back in three days. It didn't happen to my dog, and I don't understand that. So it didn't make sense. So, so many so-called biblical facts did not make sense that when I came across Pilate's question, I knew that I had actually found someone who knew how to ask my kind of question. What is truth? It's elusive. It's harder to grab hold of than a wet watermelon seed. But you want a definition? Well, I guess the Nazarene could have said something like, Truth is the certainty which is held against all contradictions, that which is complete and perfect and admits of no degree. Or maybe he could have given a Webster definition that truth is that which is established in accordance with measurable facts. But I don't think that's the kind of truth that Jesus was trying to get at. And it's certainly not the truth that got him in trouble. What got him in trouble was another definition, one that I think has more relevance for our lives today. And that is simply that truth is falsehood revealed. Truth is falsehood revealed. And revealing the places where we ourselves and others and our society is false will always have consequences. I don't know how many of you remember that old game show called Truth or Consequences. Yeah, it was in the 50s or 60s a long time ago, a while ago. But in that show, you know, you're given a choice. You can reveal some truth about yourself or you can, you have to face the consequences of not revealing the truth by doing something silly or maybe wearing a costume in Times Square, whatever the game show host has in mind. So in our daily life, we discover that to tell the truth about our lives or someone else's life, there will always be consequences. And the question is, can you handle the truth and the consequences of telling the truth? So I, I, to sort of unpack this, I want to look at just three truth-telling scenarios that I call trivial, contextual, and inconvenient truth-telling. Now, the first that I call trivial truth-telling is because the truth is pretty obvious and the consequences of telling it are usually not that great. I mean, for example, Maybe your wife or partner comes up to you and says, okay, tell me the truth. Do, do these jeans make my, you know, you know what, look big? So who, who's been faced with that dilemma one time or another? <laughs> tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, come on. Um, you know, you have a couple of choices. You can say no, of course not, lie. Or you can say, baby, you look beautiful in whatever you wear, evasion. Or you can say, yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> to which the only possible next stop is to deck or to offer to help find something that doesn't. <laughs> Trivial truth-telling can be helpful, and it's good practice for finding a way to frame telling the truth in these relatively harmless encounters. 